This video is brought to you by Straight Goods News, Canada's alternative online news source. Visit straightgoods.ca. The Canadian government has consistently failed to live up to its obligations to Omar Khadr. While Omar, a child, was trapped in a place that has been condemned around the world, the Canadian government stood idly by and said simply, we will let the process run its course. Well, that process has now long run its course. In October of 2010, Canada committed to return Omar to complete his sentence in Canada after he served one additional year in Guantanamo Bay. Yet today, he still sits in a cell in Guantanamo, eight months after he was eligible to return to Canada. We have tried again and again to persuade the government to make the decision that they have promised to make. We have tried again and again to get any sort of information out of this government as to the status of Omar's application to return to Canada. Well, miraculously, we finally heard something from them yesterday a few hours after we announced uh, this conference today. It was a letter from the minister that said nothing more than they had been saying in their public lines all along. The minister tells us that the matter is under consideration. Well, that is not good enough. Perhaps the minister thinks it has not been that long. But he has not been in Guantanamo Bay for a decade. He does not sit shackled to a floor waiting for the decision to return him to Canada. Canada has known since October of 2010 that Omar Carter would be applying to return to Canada to complete a sentence here. Canada has had ample time to make the decision that it promised it would make. Omar has lived up to his part of the deal. The United States has lived up to its part of the deal. The only reason, eight months after he became eligible to return to Canada, that Omar still sits in a cell in Guantanamo is because the Canadian government continues to fail in its obligations towards him. We call on the minister to approve the transfer immediately and to bring Omar Cotter home. Thank you. The paranoia uh, that has come since 9-11 and founded on terrorism has created an era of panic, uh, but also has permitted over the years for people to reconcile the scale uh, of terrorism and the impact it can have uh, on our nations, our freedom, and our security. Omar Kador uh, was recruited at 13. He was in the firefight at 15 when U.S. Special Forces attacked the position in Afghanistan. He was shot three times. He was then put through a seven-year process in which he was abused physically and mentally in order to extract information from him and then held in what so many have called an inappropriate, and that's the kind word, a facility that Guantanamo Bay is. We have seen the Canadian Supreme Court uh, articulate clearly that his uh, human rights, his rights and freedoms through the Charter have been violated uh, by the process of the uh, use of uh, tactics and means that included torture to extract information. It is rather interesting uh, that uh, very recently We've had, uh, from the UN, in fact, uh, the Convention on Torture uh, accuse, uh, the committee accused in June, uh, that, well, in fact, just not uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, uh, accused Canada of not taking its responsibilities regarding this Canadian citizen, and it urges Canada to promptly approve Omar Khadr's transfer application. And so we have an individual who fundamentally was a child soldier recruited to conduct evil actions 
And throughout the world, this country is leading the charge in trying to eradicate the use of child soldiers and pursue the optional protocol on child rights that says is that child soldiers are to be moved into rehabilitation, reintegration processes. I'm after not the as familiar with Canadian politics, but it seems to track pretty closely with American politics, and that is um, the politics of fear work, scaring people works. And for some parts of the population, uh, no matter what you tell them, they're not going to agree that Omar Khadr is a good guy, okay, and you're not going to convince them. And we've talked to Omar about that because it concerns him. He believes in his heart. He's a good person. He wants to do good things. Um, as far as why the Canadian government is doing it, I'll leave that to the Canadians <laughs> to decide that. The only thing that we can do is, as his military council, push as hard as possible for the Canadian government to honor the agreement that they made as a part of the pretrial agreement. You have to remember, out of all the people up here, I, I'm the person who know what ha knows what happened during the pretrial negotiations. All right, John and Bridie were not on board yet, but and the point was very clear that there were ongoing negotiations between the U.S. government and the Canadian government, which ended up in these diplomatic notes. So they're a party to this agreement, and so that's why they need to implement it. As far as why I know Omar Khadr is not a threat. I can only, uh, I believe, people, actions speak louder than words. And I've been a soldier now for 15 years, and I have represented people who are radical jihadis. And I have represented soldiers who have committed crimes. And I can tell you that the hundreds of hours I've spent with Omar is all I can rely on to say that he's a good person with a good heart, and he wants to get an education and make a positive difference in society. And could he fool me? And could he fool hundreds of guards over a 10-year period? I guess it's possible, but at the end of the day, we rely on what we see and how we interact. With I want to follow up on your question regarding the political decisions of why. why the fact that in Canada we're split on Omar Khadr, I think is a function of not only information, but preconceptions on regards to our security and whether or not we feel secure about uh, individuals who have been engaged in terrorism. Uh, we had troops in the field in Afghanistan, which meant that the individual was a threat to our own troops at the time, as others are. And so those, those factors, of course, uh, made people say, hey, how can we, in fact, accept somebody who's actually uh, been in the field and potentially could have been shooting at our own soldiers and look at, we're already bleeding there, uh, do we uh, show a different uh, parameter of analysis of what they, he's done compared to others who are not Canadians. So uh, uh, that that has continued, and that, and that that sort of attitude. And so trying to bring uh, those who want to look at the case as a child soldier case to start with, and the process that was engaged is inappropriate. Uh, can't seem to get over that that hump about the fact that he could have used force against our own forces. I think that will wane. Uh, where well, I find it difficult is, is that I started to raise this in the Senate uh, in 2006. And on numerous occasions, uh, I've uh, approached the government in the Senate and also in writing to various ministers, including the Prime Minister, of saying, why are you not repatriating them and putting them through the processes that we have signed conventions on uh, and uh, acknowledge that we are responsible for those conventions? And through Throughout the answers have been, well, first of all, it's not really our only fault. The previous government wasn't any better, because we remember the case started really in 2002. So uh, deflecting it on the fact that the other guys were just as, uh, saw it the same way, and so why should we be any different? The second phase of responses were, well, he's in a process, a legal process. He's been a bad person, and so we want the process to play out, and we will see what comes out of that uh, and uh, subsequently decide. Uh, well, this afternoon, I'm going to introduce another inquiry again on Omar Khadr to ask the government, now what's your position? Uh, the process has run its course. The Americans have decided that the individual can be uh, sent back. They've signed all the documents. Uh, the proper uh, procedures have been followed. What is holding you up now from bringing back a Canadian? Uh, there's there's a great deal of frustration. Uh, it, it's look there there. The people down at Guantanamo who are, are the guards and the staff down there, they have a job to do. And it's making their job more difficult having someone who's supposed to have been repatriated to Canada still there. And I'll 
ask the U.S. government for more specifics on that. But I can just tell you that the frustration when I'm when I'm on the you know we have to take. A ferry back and forth and on one of the ferry rides there was a senior US officer I'm not gonna name but he was on that and he has a pretty important job at Guantanamo and he's like quote when the hell is Omar going back to Canada you know he's asking me that because he knows this kid made a deal and he's like hey he made a deal why is he not back yet so we're doing what we can we can sir you know to get him back so there's a great deal of frustration you know what I see from the guards and the staff there is most of them have dealt with the law in some way and they're like hey you made a deal honor the deal it's that simple it's not a hard concept okay one year in Guantanamo go back to Canada serve the rest of your sentence this and you asked the question about the timing that packet was submitted March of 2011 I mean if they want to talk about averages and statistics we're way past that now okay they've known about it since October of 2010 but I submitted the packet from Guantanamo and have an email saying received you know, 2011, March 2011. So, and to say this, in the ordinary case this takes long, if this is ordinary, why are we here? Right? It's not ordinary. And to honor this deal, it needs to happen well, no, immediately. because the U.S. made the decisions. I disagree with the tactics of the U.S. government in this case. I'm his defense lawyer, okay? But regardless of what happened before, when the deal was made, the deal should be honored, in our opinion. So. We're here on behalf of Omar Khadr. We don't represent the U.S. government. If the U.S. government wants to complain to Canada, Canada and the United States governments can argue over about the actual you know, legitimacy of who's more right or who's more wrong. But for us, it's clear the deal was he would be able to apply after a year at Guantanamo and that he would be transferred back to Canada.